The lights are off and away they yeah, go. Extremely loose. He's managed to hold on. They get he missed the, the complete bit. <laughs> He's crazy the other stuff. Side, Freitas is on the grass on the infield for four. He slides through. He tags Richard. The Razors took the grid at Phillip Island with the bad taste of the Bathurst big one still in their mouths. But Phillip Island proved to be the needed palate cleanser, as these headlines would confirm. A Portuguese veteran snapped an eight-race eight, eight winless streak by capturing the checkered flag. The Mora Eklund Kono closing lack dogfight was quite the show. And when the points were tallied, a former champion was left tan, rested, and ready to make a run at a second crown. How will the headlines read for the upcoming race nine? We'll find out in less than an hour when the checker flag falls at Oren Park. You're watching the Global Sim Racing Channel and its coverage of the Title Influence MX-5 World Tour begins now. They hail from around the globe and though separated by oceans, they gather in the virtual world to battle, to compete, to race. Whether they're former champions looking to regain the title, new and eager hopefuls driving for glory, or legends in their own time preparing to dominate, they're all here for one reason alone, to win. Today we'll find out whose name will be forever etched into the record books. You're watching the Title Influence MX-5 World Tour. Hello and welcome to the Global, Global Sim Racing Channel's coverage of the Title Influence MX-5 World Tour, race number nine from Oren Park. I'm your host, Bill Soupzon. With me today in the booth is the youthful sage, Erden Ellis, turning the knobs and pushing the sliders, is our director, Joe Peak, and the camera locations, as always, have been provided by Dougie Beard. Run a Google, run a Google search for the phrase, hard act to follow, and you'll find a link to the GSRC broadcast of the Phillip Island race. And while that action will be hard to repeat, today's race should provide plenty of drama. We'll cover all the series storylines as the broadcasts unfold. But first, let's take a look at the always important weather conditions. The temperature today, it's a nice warm day, 83 degrees under clear skies with a track temperature of 110 degrees. Winds are eight, to eight miles an hour from the north, so it should be pretty good racing conditions for these drivers. Now, um, Erden, in the real world, Oren Park, uh, much like my ability to dunk a basketball, only exists as a pleasant memory, as the property became just as too valuable and had to give way as many racetracks have to do to a housing project. However, in the sim world, this wonderful racetrack still exists, Tell us a little bit about the drivers, what they'll be facing dealing with the uh, upcoming race. Thanks, Bill. Well, uh, this track's located in southeastern Australia. It's quite short and quite small, built in 1972, uh, 1962, sorry. And as you said, it doesn't exist anymore. It was taken down 2010, but still exists in the iRacing service, which is nice for a lot of these drivers on the sim service. It's uh, 1.6 miles long or 2.6 kilometers and has 12 very different turns and um, it's very difficult in the mx5 actually quite a fast track as well uh so it should be very interesting race for these guys it's quite difficult to pass as well and the uh pit entrance is one of the more hard tricky ones uh than other tracks so it should definitely be an interesting race we've also got track guide driven by richard losper for you guys all right we've got richard losper behind the wheel of the gsrc mx5 so let's do a lap around Oren park Coming down the front stretch, we approach turn one, which is a very fast left-hand kink. It makes the start of the lap extra tricky because you're going to be braking and turning at the same time. Setting up a pass into here or the second corner will demand bravery and skill from the overtaker. As we exit turn two, be careful not to drift wide because the crossover bridge leaves almost no room off of the pavement. Get to the left and brake hard for three. Make sure you don't apex too early because it's easy to carry too much speed and find yourself barreling through the north circuit pits. From there, like a lot of corners on this track, we have a very short stretch before four, which bleeds directly into five and takes us uphill to the bridge. Hold to the left, then lift and aim for the apex of six. This will be very difficult to spot because of the wall blocking your view. 
Then, immediately, we're into the chicane of 7 and 8, which sneaks up on you with a drop in the braking zone. Get the car settled quick, though, because otherwise you could lose it under braking for 9. The circuit heads back uphill, but just as you track out, the car will go light, so be careful. Switch back left, and then aim for the inside curb of 10 to straighten out the blind, flat-out final chicane. The track dips one last time, and now it becomes like a street course with nothing but concrete all around the outside of 12. You want to drift the car as close as you dare up to the wall to really carry your speed since momentum will be important onto the front stretch. From there, you finished a lap around Oren Park. And there you have a lap around Oren Park. It really is a wonderful little racetrack, and it's too bad it's not here anymore, but it does, like Ayrton said, it, it will exist for generations to come here in iRacing. Let's go ahead and bring up the standings now. We can take a look at this. Today we have a really small field, probably because not a lot of drivers, uh, some of these tracks you actually have to purchase in iRacing, and this is a track that isn't raced very often, so many of these drivers don't actually own this track, and so I think that kind of a uh, contributes to a small field today. We have a field of about 17 drivers. We only have two out of the top 10 drivers that you see on the list here actually racing today, and that would be uh, in fifth position, Sergio Mora, and right behind him, sixth position, uh, Dr. Ramjet Amjad Yaman. Now let's go ahead and look at the top though. Richard Eklund's on vacation in California. He's expressed that he's going to make a run for the championship now. He likes where he's standing. Yuris Jelenko, oh, I'm sorry, Jelenko is also here today, so we have three out of the top ten. Uh, Jelenko, now, what's important, if you look by his name, you have that little orange square there tilted that says warning. He picked up a penalty point uh, in his last race. He needs to have five clean races without causing an incident, or he's going to have to serve a stop-and-go penalty. So he's just got to get uh, five more races out of the way without a problem. That should wipe off his record there. We go through the rest of these. Evan Maillard, we haven't seen in a while. Uh, Dave Galink is no longer racing in the series there, and we go down uh, seventh place. Sam McAleer's not here today. Carlos Torres at eighth isn't here today. And then we have our two rookies, ninth and tenth there, Dakota Dickerson and Kyle Potts. You know, it takes a combination of talent and uh, dedication, and I think Dickerson and Potts are strong on the former and weak on the latter, if I got that order right there. So there's your point standings. Let's go ahead now and jump over to the keys to the race, brought to you by Mountaintop Cabin Rentals. Erden, what do you think might be important for these drivers to have a good finish today? Well, as usual, we've got consistency. That's one big factor here. Uh, I was talking to some of the drivers beforehand, Dexter Castro and Amjad Yaman, and some of these corners, they're a little tricky to get around and not screw up on especially uh, the turn one, two sequence, you can really catch the dirt there. Uh, so that's definitely going to be a problem. And because of that, because of a lot of these corners being difficult, passing is going to be uh, very minimal. You really have to be patient and wait for a mistake from the driver in front of you before you try to pounce. Also, pit stop is going to be big here. We talked um, before the broadcast about some of the guys, they might be taking tires right side or left side, or maybe none at all, just to save some time in the pit stop. And also that pit entry really tricky the entrance is very narrow right off the final corner so some guys might make some mistakes or lose some time going into that or you can possibly get a slowdown by going too fast into it so if you can't pass on track that's going to be the number one place to pass uh, around this track for this race very interesting it should be very uh, finding where the passing zone is in this track is going to be i think these drivers are going to have to hunt and peck to see what actually works here let's go ahead and bring up our next uh, our next uh issue there which is the phrase that pays uh, viewers we have something we've been doing all season it's the title influence phrase that pays the first viewer to email in after one of the announcers says the phrase that pays that you see on the screen right now gets added to the end of the season lottery with the chance to win fifty dollars now there's not a lot of drivers in this race today so i'm assuming many of them are watching live so uh get that uh, email set up there uh, last week, it was again won by my mother-in-law, who's very dedicated to winning the phrase that pays. Uh, there you see it. So email in to, you see it up there, ti phrase that pays at AOL.com, and make sure you leave your name so we can mention uh, the winner, maybe at the end of the race or certainly next week. And I see that phrase that pays. You have to be old enough to understand what's going on with that one. Uh, that's from a song. I know what's going on. What are they? They're playing me a trick, but I can take care of that. So there you have phrase that pays. Now... Let's go ahead, and we have just a few minutes to go. With this small field, Erden, what it has done, it, it has allowed for a very, very strange or an unusual uh, first, first row of drivers. On the pole today 
is uh who is it is it it's daniel kent and then right next to him is travis swanky so we have a, a a front row of kent and swanky uh they both made the quick six in qualifying um but because of their poor performances well, not their poor performance but they're down the charts a little bit in the standings they're going to move all the way up to the front row now usually in the quick six it's usually we have enough fast drivers where they're all used to racing together but uh, Kent and Swanky, that's going to be very new to see them up in front. I imagine they're going to be a bit nervous. Yeah, and we've got some very fast guys behind them. Sergio Mora, Yershilinko, who's in second place in the standings, uh, Amjad Yaman, all these guys. It's And as we talked before about how passing is going to be so difficult, it's definitely going to be a chaotic start for these guys. They're going to have to be patient. And I believe the, one of, which one of these guys will be able to get to the lead quickest will be the guy that will be able to run away with it pretty early. Yeah, we'll watch the front of the field because that's certainly going to be exciting with uh, Schwenke and Kent up there and then the fast guys right behind them. But then another driver to keep an eye on, is, as we'll talk about it when we go to grid, is uh, the title sponsor car, the title influence car of uh, uh, Tom Ratchie. And he, didn't, uh, he wasn't able to post a qualifying time. If, if you put a tire off or if you, if you go off track, your, your, your qualifying time is, is voided for that lap and you only have two laps to try to do it. He wasn't able to get a clean lap in, so he's starting at the back of the pack. Fortunately, it's, only, it's a small field, only 17 cars, but uh, he'll certainly be exciting because he's, he's a, uh, as Richard Losper likes to call it, a serviceable driver. So he's going to be uh, fast enough to get through some of those cars. And I think we're ready to go to grid light now. Let's see. Is, are they going to the grid? Okay, let's go ahead and... Uh, Aaron, you can call this yep. off. So starting in first is going to be Daniel Kent. Lost item is going to be Travis Schwenke. Uh, John Toussaint is going to be in third place. And then Amjad Yaman in fourth. Our fastest qualifier, Sergio Moore, is going to be in fifth. And then Lance item in sixth place is Jiris Jelinko. Stefan Overgaard is going to be in seventh place. Then Eric Garcia in eighth. Uh, Joseph Arrow in ninth place, and then Benjamin Nelson in 10th, Bill. In 11th, it's Dexter Castro. Good to see him back. He must be off from college. Benjamin Lanawood in 12th. Baker's Dozen Spot goes to Jordy Fife, followed by Derek Holland, Jiren, uh, Jeroen Ursum, Yanni Tulianen, and in the back of the field, Tom Ratchy. We're, lights are up. They're going to get ready to go for race number nine of the title, Influence World Tour. You see, sitting on the pole there in that yellow and black car, Kent, and he gets a nice jump, and he's going to take the lead. He's going to be able to hold it. Travis Schwenke making a move on the inside. I think Schwenke's going to get there as they go. Schwenke has the inside now screaming up through the middle there in that blue car is John Deuce Allen. Deuce Allen is able to take over second place. He goes a little wide. Erden Ellis, or no, that's not Erden. Ellis, he's in my booth with me. It's Amjad Yaman getting into third there. Fourth place now slots in is Sergio Mora as we see that are outside is Schwenke falling uh, way into, or is Kent's falling way back to sixth place now. As our leader is still up in front, it's Travis Schwenke in that orange car. Great start from Schwenke. It looks like everyone managed to get through the first few corners cleanly. Everyone's starting to get single file now, but a really poor start from Daniel Kent. He dropped all the way back. I think that was sixth place, he said, and that's really going to hurt him now. He had that chance in that first spot. If we go back and look at Tom Ratchy, just the Ratchy watch here, he's got by one driver. Looks like he's passed uh, Yanni Tulianen. So he's up to 14th position now, or 16th position. Back to the front. And there you see, as he's going to make a move there on uh, Jerem Ursum, I believe. He's making a move. There's Ratchy going to back out there. It's so hard to find a place to pass. And there you're looking at the tail of the field is. Tom trying to make his way up through the field, being slowed down by Jiren Ursum. Now, this is a good opportunity for Ursum. He doesn't have a top 10 finish at this small field he might be able to do. As we go back to the front of this field, we're still seeing Travis Schwenke in front, followed by uh, John Deuce Allen in the blue car. Actually, that's a title sponsor car of Mountaintop Cabin Rentals. Good to see that sponsor up there. In the child's plate car right behind then, Amjad Yaman. We have a pass now, it looks like for fourth place. And it's Mora being challenged by Jelenko. Mora on the inside. Jelenko's not going to be able to do as they go to turn three. And they hold position there with Mora in fourth, Jelenko in fifth. And then rounding out in fifth, sixth position now is Daniel Kent, who has fallen into a much more comfortable spot after getting down from the front row. We didn't mention it before the broadcast, but there's actually very few passing zones here. Uh, the two 
best ones would probably be the final corner, turn 12, you can get a run through the chicane, you can get alongside someone going to that corner, and probably turn 1 if you can get alongside them going through turn 1. Um, it's a little dangerous, but that's probably the best opportunity for a lot of these guys if uh, the driver in front makes a mistake coming out of that final corner. But uh, besides that, these corners are very difficult to pass on. You really have to hope for a mistake, as Sergio Moore actually did earlier, which gave Jelenko that outside line to manage to pull it off. But uh, we, it's not good seeing mistakes from the uh, top qualifier so far. On board now with Amja Jaman. Oh, we're off board with Amja Jaman. You can see him there. Uh, sandwiched in between Deuce Allen and, and Sergio Mora. Let's give a shout out to Deuce Allen now as we move into lap three. He's managed to get through the lap one curse that seems to plague him. So now that he's got that lap one out of the way, we'll see if he can get a good finish. Usually, if he can get through lap one, he's somebody to keep an eye on. You see him there in that beautifully colored blue car there, the mountaintop ca cabin rentals running now, giving a nice challenge as he's really putting pressure on for, uh, for the lead there as, as a Schwenke. Nice. Let's give a shout out also to Travis Schwenke. He's been able to hold the lead. Uh, usually a mid-packer doing very well up in front right now. Yeah, we've seen him every now and then. I think it was uh, one race at Sonoma. He was um, racing in the top five. So he's he's gone a lot faster, gone more comfortable with the field around him. Um, but right now, he's definitely being pressured from uh, John Allen. John Allen got a little bit of run of him. Uh, run on him previous few corners. He actually made a little bit of a mistake there. Amjad Yama might be able to make a move to sides better of it. Allen goes a little bit defensive as Amjad almost uh, runs into the back pin, but now Allen's lost a little bit of time to Schwenke in first and uh, putting up a little bit of a train behind him. And the good news for Schwenke is the drivers behind Allen, Yaman, and Mora are all pretty conservative drivers. That's, we talked about Allen's problem, but usually those problems are not a result of aggression. We have a, now a pass. Nope, that's his Amjad Yama going defensive for third position. So, Expect Allen and Yaman and Mora not to really press the issue here. They know it's a long well, race. They make mistakes. And here goes Mora making a move on on uh, on Jed Yaman for third position. He's going to have the inside as they come. Oh, the, sorry, that's the outside as they go through that right hander. Yeah, and Yaman holds the position. Three. Yeah, the outside for turn three is too, really difficult to pass. If you can get a run out turn two, yeah, sure you got a run. But uh, same thing that happened the previous lap with Uris and Sergio. They just, you can't get on the outside of that corner. You need a run to get on the inside. It's really easy to defend the spot in this track because you just cover the inside and the guy behind you won't be able to pass. And there from that high blimp shot, you can see all five top five cars all in the same frame there with Schwenke, Allen, Yaman, Mora, and then that fifth car that you can barely see in there right behind the graphics is uh, is our points leader, Yuris Jelenko. Well, not our points leader, but certainly second in the points and maybe with a good finish today, we'll definitely be able to close on Richard Eklund who is not here he's in California on vacation give a shout out to Richard I hope he's watching also to mention we have to mention the pit window uh, talking to a couple of drivers before pit window is going to be between laps 9 and 24 so quite a big window for these guys it's in the second third of the race so it should be interesting to see if these guys plan on pitting early or pitting late some guys mentioned taking tires in which case you would take right side tires only so it should be interesting to see who will actually take those tires and not, and that will really affect them on the track in the later half of the race. Let's go back and check in on Tom Ratchy as he's making his way through the field now. He's got himself up to 12th position. He's got around George Fike, Derek Holland, and Benjamin Nelson. But he's got a ways to go before he gets to the Ironman of Benjamin Lanowet, who's running currently in 11th position. There. There's Benjamin Lanowit right there. Benjamin Lanowit in a, in a nice battle just ahead of him. You see that multiple colored car. I don't even want to guess at those colors. Pink and yellow and oh, I don't know. It's 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 bright. Let me tell you that. There's a uh, Dexter. It's nice to see Dexter racing again with us here. He's off of college and his schedule doesn't allow him to race very much, but it's good to see him racing. He's following Joseph Arrow, who is certainly a veteran. I believe he's had 104 career races be under his belt. <laughs> Lisa Frank, I believe, used to, in the in the 80s, with as we see Dexter making a move now on Arrow. Wasn't that the uh, as I'm hearing from my director Joe Peak is the artist that used to do like uh, lunch boxes or, or trapper keepers or something in the 80s? Is that uh, there we go? I hear from my director. He manages to make that move, moving him up to, I believe, ninth place, that is. 
And if we go just ahead, we see a driver, a veteran that we don't see racing with us very much anymore, driving that charcoal Blondie's car. Another one of our, our sponsors is uh, from California, Eric Garcia. And he's in a nice battle there just ahead of him is the, uh, the flying Smurf, uh, Stefan Overgaard. I'm hearing that we see some damage on Stefan Overgaard's car. Must have picked it up somewhere. We didn't hear it or see it, but doesn't seem to be slowing him down as he seems to be holding position, okay? We're on board looking oh, over the Oh, Amjad Yaman's now. making a move for second place on uh, John Deuce Allen in the final corner. This is why I said it's a good passing opportunity. Ooh. Allen actually touches the wall a little bit. That's going to slow him down a little bit. Sergio Moore is going to get a run. Andre manages to get that second position, but Moore might make move into one. Yeah, Yaman left him plenty of room, but... Allen got a little wide and brushed the wall. I don't think it's going to hurt him too bad. And here comes Mora making a move now. He'll have the inside through one. Now we Ooh, got Alan a careful, John. Careful. Keep it. Are uh, they going to go into the tires? No, I think he's okay. I think he's going to be able to bring back. We talked about that before the race off camera, how it's almost impossible to go Airden too wide through two. And they tried it, and that's what's going to happen. He almost hit Amjad Yaman as well. That would have been catastrophic. We're on board now with replay as we're on board with Deuce Allen looking over just over the driver's left shoulder. And you can't see the, you can't see Sergio Moore on the inside, but you see him gain and he comes right up on Anjad Yaman. Then he loops it around into the sand and I think he kept it off. I don't think the car got any damage. Yeah, he didn't hit the wall. So he brings it back out and John is going to slot way back into, oh, that's got to put him at the back of the field, I would think. Did he get ahead of somebody? He's in a 11th spot. Travis Schwinke still leading the way. He's holding off Yaman fairly well. Sergio Moore is still behind. Pierre Shalinko still in touch with those top three. It's been a while since Yaman has won. We were just talking about that. Running in second place now, this is a good time for him to do it. Certainly schwenke has got to like have his little checklist in his cockpit there. He checks off John Allen. That's one guy gone. Now only got three guys that I've got to be worried about. And here comes Amjad Yaman going to the inside, and they touch... And Schwenke gets a little wide. Sergio Mora goes by on the inside. He says, thank you very much, boys. I hear some talk between Schwenke and on the microphone there. He couldn't make out what it was, but Schwenke looks like maybe he has damage as he's slowing down. He's dropped back to fourth place now. Yeah, he's dropping back a lot. Yeah. Think he got a slowdown, maybe? Oh, and he's almost collected there by, by uh, Eric Garcia. Well, that's a long slowdown, and we're on replay right now. Now, as you're watching it, you can see Amjad Yaman there in that green child play car, Schwenke in the orange car. Schwenke on the outside, Yaman has a nice run on him. Everything looks fine here. They come down, Schwenke goes through the right, the left-hander. Then they go to this left hand. Here we go again. Turn two again. Now they make contact, and Schwenke comes across the track. Yamjid slows down. Didn't look like a lot of contact, but maybe he bent something up there. Yeah, I think he hit suspen suspension. He's still crab walking around the track. Just hit that sweet spot that can really make the car too difficult to control. Erden, we talked about it earlier. That's, it's as hard to find a place to pass. And uh, I believe that was turn two where the action was. And it's... Uh, Maybe that's the best place, but maybe that's the worst place all at the same time. Meanwhile, that, go ahead. Well, that doesn't even feel like a pass. It looked like Amjad just, he got a run that he didn't expect to have, really. And we're looking at Benjamin Nelson now has put it in the wall. And I hear Benjamin Nelson saying, I'm so sorry, so I'm not sure what happened there. We're on a replay now, Benjamin Nelson in the yellow car. We're Ooh. on board with him. He almost hit and Jordy Fike. And he, yeah, Nelson just lost it. Then he comes across the track, puts it into the tire barrier. I couldn't see on the onboard camera. Uh, Erden, was that turn two again? Yeah, turn two. He's catching so many drivers out. He, uh, he skimmed right across the nose of Jordy Fike. I don't know if it cost him any damage. Yeah, he Jordy was still driving around, though. He was apologizing, so I imagine he must have. Uh, you usually don't apologize to yourself if you don't uh, have somebody else involved. So... That uh, Benjamin Nelson now, and then uh, Travis Schwenke have seen trouble. So if we set, we go back now. Maybe we'll take a second here to 
set the leaders again. Sergio Mora, who won in uh, last week, now is back up in front. Amjad Yaman in second. Yuris Jelenko in third. Uh, Daniel Kent doing very well. Started on the pole, dropped back a little bit on the front row, dropped back, now running in fourth. Overgaard in fifth. Castro in sixth. Garcia, Arrow, Lanowit, and Deuce Allen in tenth. Remember, Allen was had that early incident uh, fall back and uh, hasn't been able to wake, make his way back up through there. There we are on board. Oh, we're sli slifling through. Or are we going to pick a driver there? We're looking at Yuris Jelenko now, right behind uh, Amjad Yaman. It's actually passed for fifth place, is it? It's actually Castro and Stefan Overgaard going side by side a little bit. Castro got a run. They're still side by side as they're heading over down to, I think it was turn six or seven. Daniel Kent trying to get a nose on uh, Stefan Overgaard as Dexter Castro goes on by. Looks like they're going to go back single file, but Dexter Castro moving up to fifth place. Kent drops the position. Nice run for Dexter. It's been a long time since Dexter's had a top five, and uh, he's got it in sight now. We also wanted to know when Amjad Yaman's last win was. It was three seasons ago in season six, so he's definitely hungry for one. He got second place earlier this season, I think. And it looks like I just see maybe our first pit stop. Did I see Deuce Allen ducking into the pits on screen there? I'll have to check and see, but I think we might. Yep, there's our first pit stop, lap 11. And Schwanky has let... Uh, Omjed by, I guess, Shank Swanky is now, is he a uh, lap down, I believe, yes? Yeah, he's a lap down now. Probably a smart move for Allen going into the pits. He was right behind a huge pack of cars, so he didn't want to get slowed down by that. I remember, Allen's a fast, he's fast on this track. He was he was in the quick six, so um, he certainly had the speed, so he's going to try to pass him the easy way in the, uh, in the pit lane. Now, I'm looking at Allen right now. He took right side tires as he's coming out. Yeah, I think that's probably going to be the standard for most of these guys. As we're looking now at Tom Ratchie. He's in a battle with Jordy Fike, that is. Right ahead of him, actually. Eric Garcia actually takes down Daniel Kent, hits him in the rear in turn nine. Daniel Kent slams right into the wall. Yeah, we're going to get that on replay. There you see Kent in the... I'm going to say yellow and black car and gar green and black. I get that yellow and green mixed up every time. There we go. Learn your colors, announcer. And there you see in the gray car is, uh, wow, it happened quick on our replay, was uh, Garcia, who I guess, Aaron, you said Garcia got into the back of him, huh? Yeah. Looks like he was just a little bit too close, heading into that braking zone. Yeah, Daniel Kent looks like he got a lot of damage from that as well. He's in the pits right now. That's too bad. Daniel was having a good run when he started on the front row, then fell back a little bit, then got a few cars around him. And then it looks like that's probably going to be the end of his day. Let's go ahead and see if we can find out where uh, Deuce Allen has slotted in now. He's really our benchmark. Yeah, he's uh, in 14th, 13th, 14th place. Uh, yeah, last contract, about 50 seconds off a leader. Then again, he was about, uh, I want to say... 15 seconds behind when he went into the pits. Yeah, I think 50 seconds is, is a little too far for to be considered to be able to snake the lead. Now, I'll say one thing, though. If, if, if uh, we talk about drivers who are great at pit stops, certainly it's Amjad Yaman. If we want to talk about a driver who struggles in pit stop, it's our leader, Sergio Mora. He is notorious for taking slow pit stops. We're not sure what's going on. He's a Portuguese... Uh, physical ed teacher what I think he needs to do is get some of those kids that have glasses and, and don't like to climb the rope you know the, the math guys he needs to work out some kind of deal with them where you can give them a better grade in, in physical ed if they'll come and calculate mouth uh, gas calculations for him because he's notorious we'll have to watch this now but I would not be surprised if Amjad Yaman pulls a fast one again when the pit stops come in and he ends out in front even though Moore has a two and a half second lead right now yeah, it's normally just silly mistakes, like forgetting to actually change the amount of fuel you put in, and then he puts in the full tank. But yeah, it's definitely a possibility. Yershchenko also, he's uh, so far this season, he's had some really good pit stops that he's managed to make advantages uh, with. So him and Amjad are both very good at pit stops. So this could turn out being very interesting. They're both about two and a half seconds behind Mora, so they could pit at any time right now. I imagine they'll probably wait until Mora pits. 
before they can pit. Well, this race has been pretty, uh, the attrition has been pretty steep here as we now have three cars, one lap down, Kent, Nelson, and, and Schwenke. Uh, that's in contrast to what happened at, at Phillip Island last week where everyone went into that, that race with a, with a belly ache from Bath of the Bathurst, big one, but uh, Phillip Island proved to be the, the lime and the coconut that gave everyone, made everyone feel better. So we're back, though, to having a little bit of trouble. Even though this small field, it was a, been a lot of car-to-car uh, -car contact so far. Yeah, that's for sure. And the whole consistency factor is really coming into play so far. Not many drivers have been very patient. Looking at a nice battle right now with Benjamin Lanowit and Joseph Arrow. This is interesting because Lanowit and Arrow sit right now 1-2 in the Ironman competition. And Arrow is a former Ironman champion. And Lanowit, of course, is the three-time champion that those three uh, Ironman crowns got him onto the Wall of Fame. And also Arrow is on the Wall of Fame for all of his... Uh, uh, race starts, over a hundred starts, so there's two veterans going at it, two Wall of Famers. And Tom Ratu is actually not far behind him. He started in last place in 17th. He's already back up to 8th now after not being able to set in a qualifying lap. Yeah, looking at the practice times, Ratu was, was fast, but then, like we said, you got to get in a clean lap or you get put to the back. Fortunately for him, it's a small field. A large field of 34 would be devastating. So right now he's worked his way back up. Where do we decide he's sitting there in uh, eighth position? That's very nice. Nice job from him. I've been keeping uh, on the leaders. Sergio Moore is actually extending his lead. He's, his uh, fast qualifying lap was definitely not a fluke. He's now three seconds ahead of Amjad. Gained about half a second in the past lap, actually. Or the past two laps, rather. And you see there, Jelenko has been uh, been stalking Amja. Just not not really stalking. It's not scary, but he's he's been pestering him, making making unwanted phone calls, but but not sitting outside his apartment with binoculars. And this is getting going to a place to a dark place. So let's move back to the race here. Travis Schwenke uh, has officially retired. He's left the session. Daniel Kent. Uh, our other front row starter is still in the pits, uh, taking some repairs. Looks like both of those guys are not going to be having, or at least haven't had happy days so far. As I think Amjad Yaman, did he just skim the wall on the exit of that final corner? I'm going to go back now. I don't think so. It looks it seemed very close. plainer right now. Just very, very close. Sure, we'll get a replay if, the, if the, our director can get a replay for us here. Here we go. And there we're looking at, we're on board now. Oh, we're on board with the trailing car behind. So this is Jelenko looking up ahead at Amjad and, oh, I don't know. The paint shop's probably not going to be happy about that. Going he's, actually gained, he's actually gained some time from there's Jelenko pulled away a little bit. Keeping pace with Sergio Moore in that previous lap, actually maintaining that three second gap. Yamin is very comfortable with, uh, even though this isn't an endurance race, he's very good at endurance racing, does a lot of it, so he's, he knows how to stay consistent and set those uh, consistent laps one after another. We're looking at a nice battle on screen between Lanowit and Arrow right now, but Director, let's go ahead and jump up to fourth position to Dexter Castro. He's got a nice little, these two guys, not really fighting tooth and nail at each other, but... but uh, that's Overguard back there in that blue and white car. He's been able to run Castro down in that multicolored... <laughs> it's bright. And there we see him as they come <laughs> down the straightaway. There he's... It's a beautiful paint job. It's easy to... The, 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 the announcer likes it. It's uh, certainly easy to spot. Those pink 49 colors. Actually a tribute to uh, one of the old veterans of this series. Yeah, Doug Matthews, who who passed away in, in a, uh, one of the founders of the series. And every season we have the Doug Matthews Memorial. And we'll be having that, well, every other season, we'll be having that scheduled uh, for season 10. Our finale usually done at Sebring. Yeah, there so Doug Dexter. Matthews already drove, always drove the number 49. So thus, 
49 Motorsports was born. It's a nice tribute to Doug. He was a good guy. English gentleman. There you see Dexter currently running in fourth position. That's a nice run from him. Yeah, definitely. He started in 11th place just outside the top 10. So, good run. I, I think he didn't get the qualifying position he wanted, but uh, definitely a good run so far. He's about 14 seconds back from the leader. Starting to pull away a little bit from Stefan Overgaard, which he was battling with a little bit earlier. Let's go back. We have a nice battle for 11th position. Jer uh, Jeroen Yersum and, and Derek Holland. Now, this is interesting for, for Ursum. He was the answer to a trivia question earlier this season. It was a little bit of a a lot of people felt it was a little bit of a, uh, wasn't very fair to Jeroen, but he holds the record right now for the most starts without a top 10. Currently running in 11th position, I'm sure he would love to get into the top 10 and get his name off that trivia question. We can find somebody else to, uh, to embarrass. He's in a nice battle there with Derek Holland. The Barbie car versus the Boba Fett car. <laughs> and speaking of Derek Holland, uh, Director, if you get a chance, can we bring up these, the squad standings while we have a little chance before... Uh... Oh, we see a car. Was oh, that, is that... Yeah, yeah, that's your story. Jelenko, Jelenko. let's hold off on that on that squad standings. See what happened to Jelenko there. He, he did his pit stop. Oh, that's he he's coming up. out of the pits. Yeah, he took My... right side tires. We totally missed that. My goodness, Jelenko came out of the pits and it's really not his fault, but he came out right in front of those guys. Woo! All right, so Jelenko now is our is our benchmark for drivers who have pitted. Yeah, Yaman's pitting right now, so we should keep an eye on him. Yaman's Moore. coming in. Moore is still out. Yeah, Moore's still out. Castro stays out. Stefan Overgaard goes in. So I'm going to keep an eye on uh, Yaman. Maybe we can get to, we'll keep an eye on Mora when, before he comes into pit one of these times, because it's really an interesting uh, pit entrance here. Very narrow. We're lucky enough. Maybe we can we can maybe get an in-car camera when Mora pits if we're that lucky. Yaman still in the pit lane right now. Yep, taking right side tires. Heading out right now. Yershelinko coming across the front stretch. I think Yaman might have him beat. It's going to be close. There you see Jelenko full speed, but Yaman is out and away. So the doctor uh, made up a little ground. Those guys were, were nose to tail before coming in. So now that really puts the pressure on Mora to make a good pit stop. And here we are on board with Mora right now. We're going to see if Mora comes in. Now watch as he comes into the pits, this narrow pit. He's got to like squeeze in here. It's kind of like going through a toll booth. And he yeah, decides that he's going to do it. Next yeah, he's still got four laps to do it. So, Yaman has come in, and he's ahead of, of Jelenko now. Castro yeah. has yet to pit. Yaman actually gained a lot of time on Jelenko from that stop. That's where he gets the reputation. He was coined the doctor by our own Joe Peak for being so smart. He is the doctor of pitstology. He has more nicknames than a boxer. Dr. Ramjet, doctor of pitstology. Pits topology. Drives that green child place car. It's a, it's a nice, a nice, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, where you make donations to a nice charity. Charity, that yeah. supports him. Lanawet and, and Arrow still in a battle. Still Pengallon. This is for fourth and fifth, or third and fourth right now. Of course, they are yet to pit. No, I think John Allen's actually in a pretty good seat. He actually is in front of Stefan Overgaard after Overgaard stopped. So since Overgaard was right next to Castro before he went in, John Allen Absolutely. might be in that fourth place position. Yeah. There we see this is a we talked about there's a little exit road there through turn three that the drivers are not supposed to go on, but there is no penalty for going on it. And sometimes you go in there a little hot, you get wide and Got a Gives a little tack. extra grip. Yeah, we well, didn't want to give ticky tack for all that stuff. It's 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 there. Drivers yeah. like me who consistently miss their apex love those kind of things. I always feel like this track feels like a go kart track to me. 
<laughs> if you look at it, there's all sorts of, there's the, the road they drive, then there's like a crisscross of roads all in between. And of course, this is a figure eight. It actually loops over, so it turns, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't go clockwise or counterclockwise. It, it goes, uh, well, figure eight is, it's like a Mobius strip. Yep, you have the bridge there. Which I hear you actually get a little bit of air as you go over it, heading into, I think that's turn five, which is a pretty fast corner, so I want to be a little bit careful for some of these guys that are going too wide around that corner. I personally prefer the intersection over the overpass, but nobody seems to build those racetracks with intersections anymore. And Mora is going around and he's going to pass the pits one more time, so he's going to start lap number 22. I hope maybe he needs those those little math kids to help him out. I hope he's not going to drive this too far. Yeah, and I think Mora also has a history as one of those drivers who doesn't, as Dexter Castro actually heads into the pits, but Mora, he's one of those drivers who actually doesn't like to take um, tires. Most of the time he likes to just keep his car even and uh, stay on those old tires for the whole race, but I have a feeling that could hurt him around this track in the later parts of the race because this track, I mean, the left the left turning corners are pretty fast, so you can really burn those right side tires, especially that turn one, two um, section. Well, logically, if you were going to take tires, you'd want to do like a mid-race pit stop so you get the most out of them. Uh, with only 11 laps to go, it, it's it's hard to make up any time you lose taking tires. And I'm, yeah. But though, I don't even think, though, like you were saying, I think it's a matter of preference. I think you can almost take two tires without losing time. So I think it's a matter like you were talking about, just some drivers don't like the, the different grip levels. And, yeah, Alan actually managed to beat Castro as Castro comes out of the pits. He's still in front of Stefan Overgaard, but Allen looks like to be in the hot seat for that fourth place position after all of it. This uh, cycles through. Now, Tom Ratchy has worked his way up to fifth place, and we're looking there at our leader as he goes by the pits. Uh, well, I guess that wasn't. Was that pit lane? I think it was pit lane. Uh, yeah, he goes by again. Uh, Ratchy's worked his way up to fifth position, but I don't think he's pitted yet. I could no. be wrong on that, but I don't think he's come in yet. He has not come in yet. And Joseph Arrow running in third, but he is our highest driver who is yet to to box. Arrow has pitted, so we'll see if how Arrow came out. He was in that battle with Lanowitz, so we'll see how that uh, plays out there. Oh yeah, Arrow hasn't pitted. He's Ar yeah, Arrow is oh, is dropping. Yes, he is. He has pitted. Yeah. Oh, he must have, must have just pitted. Yeah, he did just pit in that in that last lap. Our timing and scoring sometimes doesn't update till they cross the finish line, and if his pit box is, is ahead of the start-finish line, sometimes it gets slow. So we see him now. He is running all by himself, though. I don't see where Lanowit is. He is behind Lanowit, so Lanowit uh, won out on that pit battle. Let's see if Sergio Moore comes into the pits now. It's got to be. And now we, this yep. is a great view. Look at this. Here he comes. <laughs> Any Aaron, car we bigger than the MX-5 can't uh, get through that hole. <laughs> we were talking about, thank goodness for this little this little car that'll fit through like a, a double French door in your house. You could garage it in your living room if you like, but man, there's not much room for anything. You wouldn't want to be driving anything much bigger than that. Okay, here comes our leader. He's bringing it into his pit box. We're looking now at, at Amjad Yaman trying to hot lap. Mora Yaman. is not taking tires. Yaman coming out of turn 12 now. He's come down the main straight. Oh, no, Mora has Yaman to be. there. Yeah, Mora's coming out of the pits right now, heading through turn one. Mora yeah, he's leaves. definitely going to beat. There we go. Mora out, and there you have it. Well, congratulations to Sergio Mora for winning the pit cycle there, or at least maintaining station. Seven and a half second difference, so I think he even gained some rows, so... Sergio, maybe you don't need those kids. Make them climb the ropes after all. You can do it on your own. We're still waiting for Eric Garcia, who has actually come into pits now, so I think he's the last of our... Really Tom Ratchie has also come in. So pretty much here in a second, everyone's going to come out. We'll be able to cycle through. I think we'll be able to cycle through our entire field. We'll do, a, we'll do an entire field for our Blondie's uh, last call here as soon as all the pits are done. Now, the question is, could Sergio Moore have short-fueled it? That's another way to screw yeah, up pit stop, that. you know. 
looks and now like the everyone pit is... Cycle, pit cycle is done, so I think, Director, we'll let you go through. I'll follow on your screen here, and we'll go through. It looks like Travis Schwenke is. Is he still out on the track? Schwenke is no. not. So let's go ahead with the last car. We'll start with Daniel Kent, eight laps down. There he is, currently running in 16th position. Uh, had trouble early. Got a nice front row start, but it hasn't done so well so far. Let's move up one spot. We go to 6th, position, which is going to be as Benjamin Nelson. And there he is in the yellow car. We saw Benjamin lose it into the wall earlier in the race. He's back out on the track, and he's currently seven laps down. Next one up from uh, Finland, Yanni Tulianen, the brother of Timo Tulianen. And there he is in one of our title sponsor cars there. Uh, let's stay on this here, and we'll get a nice picture of our sponsor there, the Eagle Nest Tavern in Green Valley Lake. He's currently running in 14th spot, one position up from him. And, of course, uh, Julian is only one lap down. Now, here's the last car on the lead lap, running in 13th position, hoping for a top 10, not for sure he's going to get there. Uh, Jeroen Ursum uh, in the pink Barbie car. He races for his daughter. One position up from there, running in the 12th position, is Derek Holland. And now, Director, while well, during our blondies, can we bring up two graphics at the same time? Is that possible? Can we bring up the squad racing? Here we go. This gonna, we have a squad racing that we have. You'll see there on the right-hand side the squad leaders over there, and you'll see Derek Holland is the uh, leader in the chance for the squad winning lottery there. And you can pull that down now, Director, as it's cluttering up a little bit. And what that is is kind of a combination between being on the winning squad and also putting in the most miles. So congratulations, Derek Holland. He's doing the best. Let's go one position up to 11th position. Uh, Jordy Fike. Very quiet, running in 11th, just outside the top 10. He's following right behind. I can see right up there, it looks like the title influence car of Tom Rathie running in 10th. So there's a nice battle between those two guys. And they're also, uh, they also practice together, uh, share some setups. Uh, and uh, so they should be pretty competitive. Let's go up one more position now as we work through the top 10. Into ninth position, Eric Garcia. Nice run from him in that gray Blondie's car, another sponsor of the series. Good to see so many sponsors' cars getting some screen time. One position up, we go to eighth position, and that is Joseph Arrow, and we've talked a lot about him. Uh, he was in a battle with Benjamin Alanowit, but now it's considerably farther back as Benjamin Alanowit, I believe, is in seventh position. We can go up to him, three-time Ironman champion. Nope, it's John Deuce Allen. There's a sponsor of one of our, uh, in the, the Mountaintop Cabin cars, in that beautiful blue car. One position ahead from him in sixth position in the battle. There's Benjamin Alanowit. So we have a nice battle between John Deuce Allen and Benjamin Alanowit for sixth spot. One spot up, you can see just ahead of him is in that the Flying Smurf, Stefan Overgaard. So there's a three-way battle there, and that would be for, fifth, for uh, fifth place. And then the top four, as we round those out real quick, Dexter Castro, great run from him. Third position, of course, we know is yours, Jelenko. Second position is Amjad Yaman. And our leader with a great pit stop is Sergio Mora. There's your last call, your total last call. Last call when everyone is more desperate and less unattractive. Brought to you by Blondie's Bar in Long Beach. Blondie's Bar, the place to be as you're looking now at our leader, Sergio Mora. Yes. Absolutely. Some, We're going to go back, Dexter, to the fifth place battle. Yeah, so some of the viewers might be wondering. We were talking about how John Allen, he was in that hot speed for fourth place. Well, he's not best friends with turn one or two because he, <laughs> he skimmed the grass again and went straight into the wall. Didn't hit it very hard, but touched his nose, so he's now dropped down to seventh, having this battle with Lanaret. One thing's nice about this track, except for turn 12, where the wall is right there, kind of reminds me of the the Indy 500 coming through one of the entering like a chicane, the short shoot. But uh, the wall's very close. As we were looking at Allen now making a move on, is that uh, making a move on Lanowet? I think he's going to have the inside position here. He's going to have position. Lanowet's going to yield the position. And that's one down as John Allen moves up now into sixth position ahead. And now he has uh, Joseph Arrow right ahead of him. What I was saying is the walls are pretty forgiving here. They're usually a long way away. Even in turn two, where all the action is, there's a lot of dirt where drivers can slow down before they get in there. A way a purposely built road course should be, in my opinion. I like a road course where you'd want to take your wife for a picnic. Don't like these road <laughs> courses where there's lots of walls. They were looking at John Deuce. So they come over the hill. Look at that beautiful scene. What a beautiful place. Of course, it doesn't exist anymore. It's all homes now, but I guess the homes are equally as beautiful. But the roads have speed limits. I don't know. If I was buying a house, I'd want to live on a former racetrack, you know? <laughs> we're looking now at our closest battle between uh, uh, Tom Ratchie and, and Jordy Fike. 
as you see down the straightaway here. Now, coming up, uh, it's going to be a, a driver left-hander coming up. Fike doesn't have far enough to get there. This is turn one, which is almost full throttle. Maybe a little lift, Airden, here for turn one as they go through. But then you have to start braking right away for turn oh, two. And oh, he breaks the rhythm, and he gets into the back of Rathy. Oh, my. Oh. I was talking him. about the braking there, and he didn't. Wow. We cut that one live. Now we're on leap replay. Aaron, do you have it on replay? Do you see what happened on that one? Oh yeah. Oh, now look at the distance here between Ratchie and and, and Allen, or uh, Ratchie and and Fike. Then they go through one. Then what happens here? Does oh, same well, thing know, as what happened with Yaman and Schwinky. It looked worse on board than it did than it did live, but uh, yeah, you gotta the the driver in the front has to be able to break it a where he feels comfortable. Yeah. And, you know... Aaron knows. Tom's, Tom's yeah. been through there enough that he knows where the braking zone is, so you can't... I mean, you don't want to assume. You, when you, I've found that when you look at things often, you, it's, what you see originally isn't always the case, but... Uh, yeah, if I could have missed his braking zone, you never know. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I would say would happen. Looks like there's a battle for fifth place going on. John Deuce, Allen getting on the inside for turn two. He might get the position on Stefan Overgaard as they're still side by side, heading over to turn three. Overgaard now has the inside as Allen just clears him right before the corner, manages to hit that apex and get the fifth place position. There you go, on the outside. And he didn't have to use that exit for the lane there. He did it all on the real track. He did almost clear him right before the corner, so not completely the outside. Our leader now goes across as we are looking now at lap 30. This is a 33-lap race, so we're three races, the three laps away. There you see our leader out there comfortably dancing to the rhythm of the road, I like to say. Let's use a few more cliches. He's checked out. Check, check his towels for check his luggage for stolen towels because he's checked out. Got about. Three laps two, left. Two races in a row for Sergio Mora. Call him Butter because he's on a roll. There, there's there's three cliches right in a row for you guys. Okay, we're sold out for the rest of the season. That's then. it. I'm done now. Not a lot of battles going on as we see uh, Amjad Yaman is comfortably in, in second place. There. We're looking here at Sergio Mora still. There's Amjad Yaman running comfortably in second. Got about a two-second lead on Jelenko. With that Fike and, and uh, Rathi battle uh, separating because of the contact, I'm uh, really looking for a battle online. Maybe maybe Allen and Overgaard, are they still close? No, even that's not really that close. So pretty much these guys are just going to bring it home from here. Yeah, Leno, it's caught up a little bit to Overgaard. So he might be able to have that battle for sixth place. Also, Allen seems to be closing in on Castro. About half a second per lap. I don't know if that's enough to catch him. He's about uh, three or four seconds. Actually, about five seconds yeah. behind. So, yeah, that battle for sixth place is the closest one. When we see his on camera right now. You can see John Deuce Allen in that blue car there. And then as he goes around, you'll see following him is, is Overguard. There you go. And then right behind him as we pan. Oh, there's a straight right down the look of this down the straightaway. You see Allen, Overguard. And uh, Lanowet. One, two, three. Actually, that's four. Uh, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth position. As we've started lap 31, now we have a nice peaceful race. I've got all my business in. I think I've got in the phrase that pays earlier. Make sure you email in. It's nice to. So relaxing to do a nice small field of 17 cars, isn't it, Aaron? Yeah, it feels like Sonoma all over again. Yeah. Still on this closest battle here of, of Lanawood and, and Overgaard. Been a few incidents, and we've caught, I think we've caught many of them on camera. Good news is, I don't think we saw anything Jelenko was safe. And remember, we talked about earlier in the, in the uh, broadcast, actually before the race started, that he needs to be clean for five races. You'd hate to see him get a penalty and have to serve a stop and go when he's in the championship battle. We're currently running third. That's going to help him uh, gain a few points on Richard Eklund, who's not here vacationing in California right now. 
Yeah. In fact, all three of these guys, more Yaman and Jelenko, will be closing in Absolutely. on their standing points. And of course, missing in action is, is Evan Maillard, who won the first three races, but he has real world, he has a lot of, uh, a lot of real world events. Uh, I think there's some real world racing uh, uh, commitments that he has to go to. So it's always nice to see Evan. He's so talented. Nice to see him here whenever he can. And he's certainly welcome to race as often as his schedule allows. So there's a nice battle here as we see. Oops. And that's Overgard who went in too hot and missed the, missed the apex. And it looks like uh, Lanowit has gotten around him now. Yeah, Overgard seems to be struggling. I wonder if he didn't take tires. Maybe that cost him some time and gain a lot of understeer on some of these corners. Yeah, I was I was looking at I was surprised by how he went in so hot. He, he just, uh, I can certainly sympathize with that. I've done that a million times. That's one of my moves I like to do when I'm being lapped, when I'm a back marker, is drive in hot and overshoot your apex. They go around inside. You don't lose a lot of time. So, pulled one out of my uh, playbook there, but I'm sure he didn't mean to do it as now as he goes a little wide again. Whew, Final flying lap. Smurf is struggling. And there's our leader on screen right now. Currently on the final lap. And really, since there's not a real battle going on right now, maybe, Director, we'll just go ahead and stay on Sergio Moore. Sometimes it's not fair to these guys when they have such a dominating race like that that they don't get a lot of screen time because they're so, out far, so far out in front. That's two in a row now for Mora. That's his ninth career win overall. That's going to move him second in the career wins list. So that's very impressive. Of course, he's behind Jan Kumans, who has about uh, like 7 30 million. Or 40. Yeah, yeah. Looking now at uh, that black and blue AMS sponsored car. Gosh, I'm Sir waiting when Jan Kumans will get a win again. Yes, I think, I think Laguna Seca is going to make the schedule as Mora comes around for the final turn. Sergio Mora wins race number nine of the title influence MX5 world tour that's two in a row for him second place I believe we go back now and we'll go back to see if Amjad Yaman there's Amjad Yaman coming across in second Jelenko is going to finish right behind in third nice race for Dexter Castro as he's currently coming up here to oh turn 12 here a little bit he's got a ways to go here he goes around turn 12 Dexter Castro nice job he is in all honesty, he is not in culinary college. He is in a real college. Not that culinary college is not a real college. Pardons to all the chefs in the world. John Deuce Allen finishes fifth, followed by uh, Benjamin Lanowet. Just Vero managed to beat Stefan Overgaard for that seventh place. Rathi in 10th, fight the lead lap there as, as uh, Jordy Fight comes across now. We're going to go to break. While we're at break, make sure to watch the slideshow of the upcoming events on you can see on GSR, uh, GSRC. We'll come back for final standings, driver interviews, and of course the sponsor plugs that I'm going to read straight today. I'm going to see if I can do it straight without ad living. So we'll see you in just a few.
title Influence MX5 World Tour brought to you here as always on the Global Sim Racing Channel. We've just concluded race number nine at Orrin Park and we're going to head and run down our, well actually the entire field of 17 drivers. Sergio Mora was our winner, two in a row for Sergio from Portugal. Second place Amjad Yaman, third place went to Euros Jelenko. Dexter Castro, fourth place, nice job from him. Fifth place was John Deuce Allen, followed by Benjamin Lanowet. In seventh was Joseph Arrow. Eighth position went to Stefan Overgaard, and behind him was Eric Garcia. Rounding out the top ten was Tom Ratchie, who's made his way all the way up from last place on the grid. Uh, had a little incident in the race we saw with Jordy Fike, who followed right behind him in 11th place. I'll go ahead and finish these out, Aaron, since we're almost done here. Derek Holland in 12th. Jurun Yur, uh, Yursum in the Baker's Dozen spot, wasn't able to get that top 10 like we had hoped he would. Yanni Tulianen in 14th place, Benjamin Nelson seven laps back in 15th. 16th position went to Daniel Kent, started on the front row, but then ran into some bad luck, finishing eight laps behind. And 23 laps off the pace, Travis Schwenke. So, Erden, those Kent and Schwenke who started on the front row finished uh, in the 16th and 17th, the back two spots. So, uh, I don't know, there's probably some type of moral to be learned there, but uh, I don't know what it is, maybe, but certainly not the uh, finish they were hoping for. Yeah, if you start in the front row, you'll lose. That's the moral. There you go. That's, that's kind of a tortoise in the hair or maybe a hare in tortoise type thing. Okay, it's interview time. We're going to see if we can bring into the booth here. Uh, we can't bring in our winner, Sergio Mora, because uh, he's from Portugal, and I don't think he, he his English is not where he'd like it to be, but somebody who does have wonderful English, even though he's from Texas, is Amjad Yaman. Is Amjad in the booth with us here? Amjad is coming in. There he goes. Amjad, do you hear me? Yep. There he is. Congratulations, second place finish. Let's go ahead and talk about uh, the incident that you had early on. I think it was with uh, Travis Schwenke. You, had, you started there with two of those drivers in the front row, Ken and Schwenke, uh, Kent kind of got out of the way, but Schwenke did a pretty good job of hanging up there in the in the front for a while. Yeah, he did. I mean, for the first couple of laps, he was definitely fast enough to be at the point. But then after a few laps, it gets really bottlenecked. And it, on that incident, on that turn, I mean, uh, he just ended up going about 75% speed in that turn. And when you go fully committed into that turn, I mean, it was really, I did everything I could to try to get stay off of him, but it was just not enough. Absolutely, and and really, where were the passing zones? It looked like turn two was where all the action was. Is that really was that really the best? I mean, maybe the only place to pass. Where were the where were the good opportunities for you on this track? Uh, turn two. I mean, but like I, I wasn't trying to make a pass though. I mean, you, you would have to right. be nuts to try to try to turn two pass. I mean, going into turn one and then the final turn, you know, after the flip flop, if you can, you know, really get on hard on the brakes, you can actually, you know, claim the inside there. Yeah, in fact, when we were watching an air comment on it, it looked like you just had a great run down the straightaway there. And I mean, where are you going to go? Um, do you like this track? I was. It puts on a pretty nice show. It's pretty to watch. How do you feel about? It? Have you raced here much? Oh, I last week uh, the advanced Mazdas were at this track, and I did six races here. So, so I was fully prepared for a, for a good fight today. Well, congratulations, second place. Mora certainly uh, he was uncatchable today. Yeah, yeah, no, no doubt. I mean. I, I would have loved the opportunity to keep him behind me, but let's face it, he would have had me. Yeah, we were hoping that maybe you could pull some pit stop magic there, but he had a good pit stop, and uh, there was a, it was pretty much uh, end of story after the pit stop. But congratulations, second place. Good job, and we hope to see you again uh, next time we race. Yep, thank you. All right, Amjet, congratulations. Second place finish for Dr. Ramjet. Uh, that's going to make my 92-year-old mother-in-law very happy at home in Lakewood, California. She is the president of the Amjad Yanun fan club. We're going to look now for our next interview, and I think we're going to be able to go down to our fourth place finisher with uh, Erden's going to get this, I think, and these guys are buddies from way back. Now, do we have Dexter Castro here? Yeah, thanks, Bill. Dexter, are you here? I am, I am. There we go. Well, congratulations on the fourth place finish. You started a little farther back where you... um. Did you just not have the pace here today, or did you just not get a great lap in? 
Well, I mean, I think that's just typical for me. Uh, <laughs> contrary to what uh, Richard might say, I'm not exactly some hotshot hot lapper. Uh, I'm usually absolutely horrendous in qualifying. Well, you did manage to get a good run through the field. And a similar question to what we were asking of Amjad, where, where were you finding the places to pass? Because you, you probably pass most people out of a lot of these guys on this track. Uh, yeah, for me, uh, my go-to one was, was turn one, but uh, you couldn't just do it there. I had to basically get a uh, run out of whatever the corner before the chicane is. Uh, I had to get a run out of the corner before the chicane and then follow them through the chicane peek to the inside into the final corner and then uh, usually they would run wide and I could get a run out of the final corner after ducking in behind them. Right, and that seemed to work pretty well. Also, uh, it came pitch strategy as well. Uh, we noticed that you went in about midway of the pit window and took um, tires as well. Do you think that was a good idea to go tires? Because actually our leader took no tires for that race. Yeah, I don't know whether the tires helped or hurt, but... Uh... I was only taking like 1.2 gallons or something like that, uh, 1.3 I think. Uh, so the, the tires were basically free, uh, so I just took them just because that's what Amjad said to do. <laughs> hey, hey Dexter, it's Bill. Let me, let me follow up on a couple of questions. When you were doing the pass on one, were you able to finish your pass at, at turn one or did you have to carry it all the way over to turn two or were you able to finish the deal before you got there? Uh, everybody just backed out in the breaking zone of turn one. I mean, I think, you know, I was prepared to hold the inside through turn one and into turn two, but I, I always was able to actually use right. the whole track. And then I think this is what everyone wants to know about you. Uh, where actually are you going to college? What is, what is, what is your, uh, what is your place of education? Uh, actually currently nowhere, but, uh, <laughs> cause uh, I'm actually taking a bit of time off. I've for done the, that for the foreseeable future, well, um, but yeah, I, I went to uh, I went to Savannah College of Art and Design last year. And was not, been... It was not culinary college, though. No, it was it was art okay, college. Okay, <laughs> all right. Well, you know, uh, I've taken many a break, so there's a you're young. There's plenty of time, so enjoy the time off, and maybe it'll give you more opportunity to race with us. Yeah, I mean, I, I plan on doing the whole Conti series, and I plan on doing the last. Uh, race or two or however many there are with the makeup in in this series so uh yep that's great thanks dexter it's always See good ya. to hear from uh it's always good to hear from dexter isn't it oh yeah and just to clarify when dexter was talking about richard that was uh one of his uh forum sparring partners uh, it's richard losper and let's just get that confused he wasn't talking about richard Eklund, our current point leader Okay, let's go to our next interview, and I don't see who we have. Are we going all the way down to, do we have Deuce? Yep. Do we have, okay, John Deuce Allen, it's Bill here. Do you have me? Here he comes, John. Are you in there yet? We're hoping to hear from John Deuce Allen. Had a fifth place finish today. And Deuce, there you go. Hey, congratulate. First of all, congratulations on getting through lap one. That was the start of it. We thought we were home free from there, but then you ran into some trouble that turn two was uh, was your Achilles heel this week, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the first time, the most important one, lap seven, I think it was, Sergio got a run on that kink uh, on turn one, and uh, I missed a gear trying to hold the outside, got into the dirt, and uh, every fiber of my being I was trying to miss plowing <laughs> into Omjet because I didn't want to take him out. And then once I cleared him, it was all about staying out of the tires, which I missed by about three inches too. So uh, after that, <laughs> I was just trying to calm the nerves. Yeah, we got a, We got an on-screen view of that on the replay. And boy, when you got out there, you really were close on them fast. And you, you managed to uh, not get into the rear of them. Yeah, I would have, being as we're uh, teammates at Conti, I did not want to take out a teammate. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were quick at this race. And then, uh, then you had another issue. Uh, did you mention that you got off track again one more time? Wasn't it on, on the same corner? Yeah, same corner. I... Um... I really, I, a lot of people were lifting or braking at the turn one kink, and I usually wouldn't until the curbing there, and uh, I could gain a lot of time, but the risk was, you know, you might go off turn two, and it happened to me twice. Um, but man, where do you pass someone on this track? It was fun chipping away. Yeah, that's what, that's been the talk of uh, during the broadcast and then through all the, uh, all the interviews we've had so far. Well, congratulations on a fifth place win. It's nice to actually bring one home on the lead lap. Top five is always good. You can build off of that, get a little momentum going. And uh, let's see if we can get some. Let's see if we can go top fives all the way out for the last three races of the season. 
Sounds like a good goal. I'm with you. All right. It's always good to see the uh, mountaintop cabin rental car doing well. John Dusal in fifth place position. And now we're going to go to uh, uh, Ayrton. We have Benjamin Lanowitz there. Do we have uh, you have him? And we do. Ayrton trying to chase down Benjamin. Hey, turn around, Benjamin. We have an interview. Hello. Go ahead, Ayrton. Oh, okay. Uh, so, Ben, good race. You had a really good run. Uh, you started in 12th place, managed to get up to 6th. Good finish for you. Uh, and you had a great battle with, uh, I think it was Stefan Overgaard for a lot of the race. And also John Allen at the end there. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, I was just racing clean and racing hard. Uh, I was surprised by the pace I was able to get since I really had no practice before uh, this morning. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, I had a really clean race and, oh, I had fun, uh, uh, stand behind, uh, Joseph Arrow. We, for like more than half the race, I was just within a second of him. So that was fun. Are you going to try to go for that Ironman standing championship once again? Yeah, I'll try, but I think Joseph's got me, uh, he's a couple of kilometers ahead and if he finishes the race and I finish the race he's got it so I I I would I bet on him That's a hard that's a hard thing to win isn't it uh Benj because you had a you weren't you're out of this not because of a, a driving error was it didn't you have like a a mechanical problem that cost you uh, Yeah to... I uh my internet disconnected on one of the races and on the other race it was it was the quote unquote big one that got Oh that's me. right <laughs> Yeah I was surprised that, that got pretty much everything Well Congratulations on your, where do we finish here today for you? Did we get a, uh, where were Six. we there? Sixth position for you. That's a nice finish for you. You know, I like your quote where you say, you used to be the fastest of the slowest, now you consider yourself the slowest of the fastest. That's a, that's a nice way to put things. I think you've really, your pace has really been outstanding. Yeah, I've been getting faster, trying hard. I should really put more practice in than I do. Then maybe you'll see me top five sometime. Hey, before I let you go, let's go ahead and cross over series a little bit. I see that you're doing a little bit of the uh, the Conti series, the endurance series. Are you enjoying that? Oh, yeah, it's really fun. I, I love these uh, endurance races, and, and having a, a teammate is great. Who is your Especially teammate? Especially one as who, talented as Dexter. Oh, is it Dexter that you're racing with? <laughs> Have, who, uh, before I let you go, who's, who's been anchoring? Are, are, are you the anchor, or does Dexter anchor that? Uh, well, I mean, he is quite a bit faster than me, so I guess I'd say he's the anchor. Okay, he's, he, he closes out the races, then he, he, he goes for the Yeah, yeah, the I, I start and uh, try to keep out of trouble, and he finishes them. Well, nobody should be able to do that better than you, certainly, so I think he uh, <laughs> got a, putting you in a good role for success there. So congratulations today on your win, and we'll see you next uh, Certainly we'll see you next time, as you never miss a race, so we'll see That's you next right. time at I'm gonna, Suzuka. I'm going to try to get 100 races just like Joseph Farrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. It may take a while. Yeah, boy, that's a that was fun to see those two guys, Erden, uh, uh to watch uh, Sergio. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Joseph Arrow and uh, Benjamin Lanawood battle it together. I think Erden, we have one more guy. Who do you have that we can bring in? Is Jeroen Jer Ursum? Yeah, I believe so. It's got him in here. Jeroen, you're here. Yeah, I'm here. I I just closed the event page, so I don't know where you exactly finished. I think he's there. Oh, he's, I'll help you out. He finished in 13th, three 13. spots out of that top 10. Yeah, that's painful. I was aiming for the top 10, but it wasn't, uh, wasn't going to happen this time. I, I think I should have been 12th at least, because uh, I, uh, yeah, I messed up my pit stop a bit. <laughs> I was looking up my screen to, uh, to get the right amount of fuel, and then I was thinking, hey, why isn't it fueling? And then there's saw something standing there. You're too far back. Ooh. <laughs> so I, I, I think I threw about, away about five or six seconds, and that was uh, I finished one second behind Derek Holland. So mixed feelings. <laughs> it's always a bummer when that happens. You were you were out there. You were battling for around eleventh place in the uh, beginning half of the race. Yeah, you just missed out there. Also, you missed out Sonoma. So I mean, you're getting closer. You're definitely getting closer. Maybe uh, before the end of the season, you might get it. I hope so, yeah. <laughs> we will see. Well, it's always great to have you in there. And, and uh, Jerome, we we'll hope to see you. Do you think you're going to be able to close out those last? We have three three events left, all in Japan. Do you plan to make them all? You usually make every race. 
yeah, that's uh, of course I'm planning to uh, to compete in them all, and then all hopefully right. to get another. Uh, yeah, top okay. 20 finish was my aim for before this race, but when I joined the server, I think okay, maybe uh, aim a little bit higher. <laughs> Well, 13th is nice job for you. Congratulations. That may be your... Yeah. We'll have to check. That may be your highest finish. We'll, we'll run some stats. We'll get that posted in the forum for you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Well, Erden, any last thoughts here before we do our final plugs? Well, it was definitely more exciting than I expected. That's for sure. It was uh, a, lot, a lot more race and a lot more passing than I thought there would be with this track. Yep, yeah, but once they all settled down there, the last few laps were, were uneventful. But it was a nice race. A few incidents... A uh, couple things for the IRT to take care of, but overall, a, a nice race and hopefully a good broadcast. Okay, I'm going to play these straight. I'm telling you, I'm playing them straight today. So I want all of you guys to pay attention, though, because these plugs are important. Uh, these are the people that, that actually make these broadcasts possible. We'd like to quickly thank our sponsors. Tidal Influence, it's an ecological consulting firm based in Long Beach, California, that restores wetlands. You know who's in California is Richard Eklund. I wonder, I bet you Richard Eklund, I didn't get it straight very long. All right, I give up. I'm not going to do it straight. I bet you he probably went to uh, Tidal Influence to learn about endangered species and education, uh, have uh, get education like children do there, and about the environment, you know? For more information, go to TidalInfluence.com. And I bet while Richard was in California, he needed a place to stay. Maybe he went to Green Valley Lake. It's You know, it's the best-kept secret in the San Bernardino Mountains of California. Uh, and if you want lodging, you want to go to Mountaintop Cabin Rentals. And if you want to know more about that, that's at gblcabinrentals.com. And of course, if you're there, and I know Richard Eklund is now 21 years of age, so he could go over and enjoy an adult beverage at the EVMS Tavern. Uh, you can go over there, you can have a cold drink or a hot meal. So check out Eagle, Eagle Next Tavern, uh, Eagle, Eagle's Nest Tavern on Facebook. And of course, thanks to our companies and equipment and software that we use on the broadcast, iRacing.com, XSplit, Twitch TV, Audio Technica, Behringer, and Aver Media. And thanks in advance to, uh, oh, <laughs> this is in the script, uh, to Tensender, uh, my 41 long shot uh, to today's Cup Kentucky Derby. Uh, if that hits, uh, I'll have more than enough money to pay for my Oculus Rift goggles. So come on, that's going to happen. Keep an eye on that. Ten senders. A special thank to Eric Eckholm, whose music is not only found here on TSRC, but in TV commercials, music trailers, iTunes, Spotify. If you like our music, tell Eric Eckholm where you heard it at uh, Eric Eckholm on Twitter. Additional thanks to Casey Galan, who also provides us with our music for our broadcast. You can find more of his music at caseylalan.erdencamp.com. Thanks uh, to my mic mate, Erden Ellis, the youthful sage, our director, Joe Peake, Dougie Beard for his camera locations. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, you can find it at GlobalSimRacingChannel.com, along with archived races and race highlights. We're also on Twitter at GSRC Channel and Facebook at slash GlobalSimRacingChannel. The title Influence MX5 World Tour returns in two weeks, May 16th, when it uh, visits its Visits the land of the rising sun for the first of three of the final races starting in Suzuka. But next up on the Focus of Racing Channel, later tonight is the Boot Lake Racing League's Outlaw Race, number three for the SK Modified. Hey, if you haven't seen that, that's a really exciting event there. 75 laps of circular excitement from the Wallace confines of Oxford Raceway. Check into that. The track is like built in like a hayfield. And uh, you can see that uh, later today. That's starting at 6 p.m. Pacific time. Don't forget to send your comments and support in support for the proposed but yet to be green lighted series, Global Sim Raging Channel broadcast greats events in history. You won't want to miss episode five when the always colorful Sean Ambrose calls the action as the first page is inked by the Gutenberg printing press. You know that doesn't sound that exciting. It's, uh, Sean Ambrose it really has his work cut out for him to make that cut. You know, I think that show maybe has jumped the shark. Uh, and now that all of our housekeeping is out of the way, it's time for us to say, have fun storming the castle. So until next, until next time, let me get this straight. Race hard, race clean, and we'll see you on the track.